you're searching for Cisco training and you haven't worked with routers before, then the certification that you're likely to need is the CCNA. This will give you the necessary skills to set up and maintain routers. Large companies with multiple locations use routers to connect their networks so that they can keep in touch. The internet itself is actually connected via many routers and data switches. Now, Gaining this type of qualification means you'll probably end up working for a large organisation that has a wide geographical spread, but who still wants to maintain secure internal data communications. Other usual roles could be with an internet service provider. This specialised skill set is obviously quite highly paid. As routers connect networks together, look for a course that includes basic networking skills such as the CompTIA Network Plus and A Plus before you start your CCNA. You'll need this background understanding on networks before you get going with any Cisco training or you may find yourself a little lost. Once you're qualified and looking for work, employers will also be looking for those networking skills alongside your CCNA. And please remember, qualifying up to the CCNA level is all you need at this stage. Don't be pushed into attempting the much higher CCNP qualification. Get a couple of years experience under your belt and then you'll know if you need to train up to that level. If you do, you'll be much more likely to succeed at that stage as your experience will greatly help. Let's be honest, individual job security really doesn't exist any longer. Most companies will get rid of workers if things get tight. But if your skills and qualifications are in an expanding marketplace, then you're in the right environment for true job security. Where there's a shortage of trained professionals, you'll always find companies looking for the right people. Take the IT industry for example. The last eSkills survey showed there was a skills gap of around about 26%. So this means that for every four jobs that exist in IT, there are only three trained people to do them. There's really been no better time or market conditions for getting trained into this rapidly evolving market. Students who are looking to get a career in IT very often have no idea which path they should take or what area to get qualified in. After all, if you've got no experience in the IT market, how can you possibly expect to know what somebody actually does day to day, let alone of course decide on which training route is going to be the most appropriate one to get you there? Really, the key to sorting this out is to take a good look at a number of different areas. Things like your personality type, what kind of things do you enjoy and what don't you like, why you want to get into IT, and you'll need an explanation of each career path and what makes them different from each other. And clearly, you'll need to think about what effort, commitment and time that you're prepared to put into your training. So the only real way of covering these properly is through an in-depth discussion with somebody who knows the industry well enough to be able to guide you. Amazingly, most UK training companies still teach IT from workbooks and reference manuals. For most of us, this tends to be needlessly boring, drawn out and slow. Psychologists who've looked at learning tell us that we remember a lot more if we involve all of our senses, and if we get practically involved in what it is we're studying. So the answer is to find a course that uses multimedia CD and DVD ROMs, and always make sure you're shown some kind of demonstration from the training company. Your training materials should include videos of the instructors, live demonstrations and slideshows, and they should always have interactive labs for you to practice what it is you've learned. It's generally best to avoid training that's purely online. You want actual physical CD or DVD ROM course materials so that you can use them whenever and wherever you want, and you're not totally reliant on your broadband connection. Having full support really is critical with many technical programs, but unfortunately most companies only give office hours or extended office hours support. Very few of them go late into the evenings or at weekends. So find training where you can receive help 24-7 at any time of day or night. And make sure it's direct access to the tutors, not just some messaging system, because it'll slow you down if you have to keep waiting for calls back during office hours. Only true 24-7 round-the-clock live support really delivers for proper technical certification. You'll find that in-centre workshop days are often sold as a big benefit by many companies. But if you talk to most of the students who've used them, they'll tell you the opposite's true. You've got all that travelling for instance, multiple trips and often hundreds of miles, and the classes are normally Monday to Friday, which means taking two or three days off work all the time. Well, if you've only got 20 days holidays a year, using half of that on training doesn't leave much for you. And don't forget the extra cost of travelling and accommodation either. 
sometimes this runs into hundreds and even thousands of pounds extra. And maybe you'd like to work at your own pace, or maybe you want to keep your training private so there aren't any repercussions at work. And how do you honestly feel about asking questions in a class full of other people? All these reasons and more are why it's much simpler to watch and learn from pre-filmed classes, taking them when it's convenient for you and not someone else. You can redo the modules as many times as you want and there's no need to take notes because you've already got the lesson. Quite simply, you'll save time, hassle and money. Always look for authorised exam preparation materials as part of any technical training package. It's very easy to get thrown by practising exam questions that don't come from official sources. Often, the way questions are phrased can be quite different and you need to be ready for this. And always test your understanding with quizzes and simulated exams before you take the real thing. You'll be far more confident and much more likely to pass. Offering exam guarantees is a popular sales gimmick at the moment, but if you examine the small print, you'll find out what's going on. Obviously, the exams aren't free. You are paying for them. They've just been included in your package price, which means, of course, that you're paying for them up front. Now, you should know that a lot of profit is made by companies charging their exam fees at the start and then hoping that you won't take them all. And they also control when and how often you can take that exam. They'll only allow a retake once they're completely satisfied that you're going to pass, otherwise they're losing that extra profit. So doesn't it make far more sense to find the best exam deal at the time, not to pay any markup to the training company, and to do it locally rather than in some remote centre? Pay for it when you need it and not before. The honest truth is that if a student pays for their own exams, one at a time, they'll be much more likely to pass first time, as they'll be conscious of the cost and they'll apply themselves appropriately. Why pay hundreds or even thousands of pounds extra for so-called exam guarantees when common sense dictates that the best guarantee is study, commitment and good exam preparation? Many companies provide a job placement assistance service to help you get your first IT job. But often too much is made of this as it's really not that difficult for any motivated and trained person to get a junior role in the IT industry as there's such a shortage of trained staff. You would ideally want CV and interview advice though, and we encourage students to get their CV updated the day they start training. Many support jobs are offered to students who are still studying and haven't even passed an exam yet. At least you'll be on the maybe pile of CVs rather than the no pile. The best way to get placed is through specialised and independent recruitment consultants. The bottom line is they only get paid when they place you, so they've got the necessary incentive. Many students, it seems, are prepared to study their hearts out for years sometimes, only to give up at the last hurdle when looking for their job. Market yourself. Make an effort to get in front of employers. Don't expect that perfect job to just fall into your lap. Take a good look at the certifications that you're considering. Make sure they're all current and commercially required. Don't bother with courses that lead to unknown in-house type certificates. Only the fully recognised accreditations from the major players like Microsoft, CompTIA, Adobe and Cisco are really going to mean anything to employers. One question that often comes up is why should we get commercial certification rather than traditional academic qualifications that you get through schools, colleges or universities? Well, essentially, industry recognises that gaining the proper accreditation from the likes of Microsoft, CompTIA, Cisco or Adobe is far more effective and specialised, saving both time and money. Commercial certification concentrates on the actual skills that are required, together with an appropriate level of background knowledge, rather than going into the depths of background detail that academic courses can often get bogged down in. The bottom line is, recognised IT certification provides exactly what an employer needs. It says what you do in the title. For example, the Microsoft Certified Professional Qualification in Windows XP Administration and Configuration. So, an employer just needs to identify exactly what they need and what certifications will fulfill that need, which of course makes it much simpler for them, and that's why they prefer it.